AI. Generative AI and large language models are flooding the markets. From chatbots producing marketing copy, poems, blogs, to video and image generators creating synthetic ads. ChatGPT in the meantime has become the fastest growing app of all time, accruing 100 million users in just a few months. So what is going to be the economic impact of generative AI on the world, countries and businesses? This is one of the questions that people have been asking most. And in this video, we're going to review the emerging evidence and studies on it. We're going to start with a very brief historical view on forecasting the economic impact of artificial intelligence and then we're going to jump straight into the forecasts of generative AI specifically, starting out with first the world and the US economy, then looking at particular organizations, and later on we will apply these findings into a case study on the creative industries. Before we get started, I would really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel. I'm producing a lot of content on generative AI's impact on the world and the economy, and I would really appreciate your support. Right, so trying to predict the economic impact of artificial intelligence as a whole is really nothing new. Automation anxiety has been on the back of people's minds really for decades. It started with the famous New York Times articles called The Threat of the Machine Age, which was published in the 1930s. Later on in the 1960s, the Lyndon Johnson administration was provided with a study called the Triple Revolution Report, in which it was describing the inevitable social upheaval that emerging technologies would bring. And in 2015, again, the Oxford Martin School produced a report that forecasted 47% of all jobs in the United States being automated by the year 2050. So the reality is there's been a lot of studies and a lot of these studies have been inaccurate. In truth, some jobs will be automated, new ones will be created, and some will stay. But having said that, there has been a change. This is a chart that was presented by Kai-Fu Lee on the TED Talk and was generally seen as a pretty robust reference point for trying to understand automation resilience in the labor market. The jobs with the highest degree of repetitiveness will be the ones that will be most at risk of automation. Think, for example, of taxi drivers, delivery services. And on the other hand, jobs that would require strategic thinking or creativity would be the safest. Think of artists, strategists, writers, perhaps. But with generative AI, this model has been turned somewhat upside down. And I want to show you exactly how. Let's start with the impact on the broader economy. And there was just recently produced a study by OpenAI themselves with the University of Pennsylvania, where they're really trying to have an early look at the labor market impact of large language models. The main findings here are that approximately 80% of the US workforce would have at least 10% of their works in some way affected and impacted by the introduction of some of these large language models or generative AI tools. Similarly, 19% of workers would see at least 50% of their tasks being somewhat affected by large language models. And to be quite honest, the numbers are, in my opinion, relatively unsurprising. Think about software or new technological innovations that you have used. Computers, the internet, any kinds of software that organizes your workflow. All of these have been really significant in terms of how it's affected your or my job. So I think that these forecasts are even relatively conservative. The thing that I do find interesting is that this study says that the influence spans all wage levels and in particular with higher income jobs being most affected. So different from the studies that predicted blue collar work to be the ones that would be automated first, this study actually hints at the fact that it might be white collar work that could be affected. There's another global study produced by Goldman Sachs, which forecasts that generative AI tools could add up to 7% to the global GDP. And here, this number essentially would vary depending on the rate and the speed of adoption of these generative AI tools. Their main prediction here as well, quite interesting, possibly a little bit higher than the one by OpenAI, is that about two thirds of current jobs would be affected by automation through these generative AI tools. Now, to me, this sounds again, like a pretty normal historical trajectory of technological deployment. Now, to be completely fair, I think that some of these forecasts really need to be taken with a grain of salt. For example, I do see a distinct danger of with these numbers, with these big promises and people just rushing towards adoption, investing in these kinds of tools without actually really thinking much of the safety and trust requirements that implementing brings along. The second issue is perhaps a little bit more of an analytical one. We can create these kinds of like global macroeconomic studies, but at the end of the day, the impact of automation is local. So yeah, sure, I know a lot of jobs are now remote, but as a matter of fact, the way that automation is felt is in particular kinds of cities or villages. Automation will be experienced very differently in a highly modern San Francisco versus cities on its outskirts. It's going to be very different 
in the north of England or in the very highly economically active south, such as London. And that's the same in Germany between west and east or in Italy between north and south. So making deeper analysis on that will be crucial for policymakers, but also for investors and any other stakeholders to understand the actual impact of generative AI. Now let's look a level deeper at the organizational level. And here there's actually some very interesting studies. One of the studies that I found from March 2nd, 2023 is from Shaq Noe and Whitney Zhang from the MIT. They basically examined the productivity effects of generative artificial intelligence of chatbots such as ChatGPT, looking particularly at mid-level professionals writing tasks. Put simply, the results show that introducing workers to ChatGPT increases productivity, quality, as well as the time taken for accomplishing this task. So it's a pretty strong net benefit. Something that I think is quite interesting is that they mentioned that exposure to ChatGPT increases job satisfaction. So the fact that these tools help them produce tasks in perhaps a more effective way and focus on other areas that might be more interesting is actually something that increases the overall experience of work positively. They do mention as well that having these tools increases concerns over the future of their job. So as employers, it's making sure that these workers remain upskilled and have the feeling that they're taken along the journey as these tools are integrated in companies remains a crucial challenge. The new study I was able to find is one called Generative AI at Work from Eric Brynjolfsson, Daniel Lee and Lindsay Raymond. And they were studying 5,000 customer support agents that were basically using Generative AI based conversational assistance in their work. The main finding again, similarly in line with the previous study is that these tools increase productivity by about 14%. And the main impact here is on people that have just started their jobs and are on average lower skilled. Their explanation for this is that they say that these generative AI tools essentially take some of this, what they call tacit knowledge that some of these more experienced workers have and are able to distribute it more equally across the company and with lower skilled workers as well. Looking into the future, I think there's really three relatively straightforward forecasts that we can make here. Considering the current rise of investments in AI R&D, I'm pretty sure that we can expect the quality of these tools to rise even further. The second one is that as these tools are mostly accessible either for free or very cheap, they will further reduce costs for companies. And the final one is perhaps a little bit more high level, but that is basically the economic uncertainty, competitive pressures that we're currently facing in the world, which because of the higher productivity and lower cost will probably result in a higher adoption of these tools. Okay, so now let's look at some more specific examples on a case study. And the sector I want to look at here is the creative industries. This video here shows a commercial of a fictional pizza company. Are you ready for best pizza of life? Bring friends down to pepperoni hug spot. Now, nothing in this video is real. So let's bring back the findings from the studies that we just analyzed. Accessibility at low cost and high quality. For the most part, this is reflected here as well. Sure, I know the quality isn't exactly great, but give it a few years time and I guarantee you that generative AI tools will be able to produce a video that looks 100% real. So think about it. To develop this video, the creator called Pizza Later used GPT-4 for the script Mid Journey for the images, Sound Draw for music, and Runway Gen 2 for video clips. Editing aside and the time investment, costs were really minor as all of these tools are accessible either for free or relatively cheap. There were no cameras required, no microphones, no actors, no location renting, nada. Simply put, generative AI will become the cheaper alternative to human-generated content. This curve here captures my hypothesis of how the industry could look like. At the lowest layer, because of high and free accessibility of these AI tools, I really believe that we're going to see a flooding of our digital spaces. This is easily generated AI content. I call it AI fast art, and it will probably make up the majority of content that we will see online. There is then a middle layer of AI and human-generated content. And this is particularly interesting for, let's say, commercial design, video ads, where quality essentially matters more. So basically anything that might possibly involve a firm or some content that is being paid for, I think will in all likelihood be generated by Schumann as well as an AI working together. Then there's a final layer, which is basically fully human-made content. And due to the economic incentives and creative potential, there's really an argument to be made there is going to represent mainly the thinnest layer. Compared to, it to today's painting industry, Italian leather, potentially even vinyl discs. It should really be said that new technologies have always changed the way we work. Think about the typing machines, the computer, or even the internet. And generative AI is really not that much different in that sense. Perhaps the challenge or the question 
will be to what extent will we be able to compete as these artifacts will become increasingly smart. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. I have a lot of content coming up on generative AI and how it's going to affect the world. So make sure to tag along and I hope to see you back very soon.